Hello everybody, it's me, Tony, RCA Tony. I'm just going to call myself RCA Tony from now on just to make it easier. Um, I wanted to make a video about how RCAs and the post office are paid. Um, from what I gather and from what I know how I get paid is RCAs, they, um, they're kind of under like a contract type of pay with the post office or most of your post office may call it an evaluation time. Our post office we call evaluation, so each RCA or rule carrier will be assigned a relief or their own personal route. If you're an RCA, it's called relief. Um, if you're a rule carrier, it's just whatever route you're assigned to. So the evaluation will be an evaluation time it should take you for um, the whole week. Each route is evaluated based off of how many stops you have to do, how far it is, so they the post office has a um, special team that comes in to evaluate the routes and these times can change over the years. Um, just yesterday we had a few guys from, I don't know, I don't want to call them corporate or nothing because it's the post office, but these guys, they came in, there's like eight of them and their job was to come in to evaluate um, the time it takes for when you get in, when you get out, when you come back, how long it takes you to case and everything. But going back to uh, rural carriers, uh, particularly like myself, I'm RCA, I get paid evaluation if I'm doing relief for my carrier. So I want to touch bases on the hours and how the evaluation works again. So in a week, if your route is evaluated for 45 hours, like mine is, you basically have 45 hours to do um, that route. I'm not saying you don't get paid more if it takes you longer so how it works is if you work like 10 hours in one day um if you work eight hours and then an extra two hours that you think it's overtime it's not going to be overtime unless you pass your route evaluation time so if i work 10 hours i'm only going to get paid 10 hours for the day that i work on that route and those 10 hours would be subtracted from my evaluation time and once I've accumulated enough hours that go after my evaluation time, that's when I start getting paid overtime. <clears throat> so, for instance, if you work 10 hours on Monday, 10 on Tuesday, 10 on you know Wednesday, Thursday, that's 40 hours. And then you do again on 10 on Friday, that's going to be over. Um, then you start making overtime because my routes evaluate for 45 hours and I've already put in like 50. So five remaining hours would be counted as overtime from how um, I've been told it works. At the academy, they don't, they don't really dig much into it. Uh, I'm pretty sure because rural carriers get paid in the most difficult ways. Like my, most of my supervisors, they have no clue how rural carriers are paid. But from what I asked and I got told that's, that's how it works. Um, but as far as the guaranteed hours as a rural carrier that you'll get, um, your main job is to fill in for a carrier when they're not there. It may be the carrier that you're assigned to or the route that you're assigned to or it could be a different route. From what I learned is it can be any route. Um, I thought that um, coming in, I was assigned a route and a carrier that I was going to get relieved or be a relief for, but that's not the case. After Let's say your main route, your guy's absent on a Monday, you'll do that route on a Monday. Then he comes back and he does his route, but then you would think you have nothing else to do for the rest of the week. That's not the case. Um, so on Tuesday, if another carrier is out and they have, they, that carrier does not have an assigned relief, you have to fill in and do their route. You'll be trained to, quote unquote trained to, but you will be um, their relief as well. So just be... Mindful, it depends on how many RCAs are in the office. Each RCA is typically assigned a relief, but the RCAs, they need a day off too. So there could be a time where the RCA and their relief carriers off and no one's doing their route, but then you have nothing to do. So they'll call you in to do it. Um, at my office, um, I, I, get, I get a lot of time. I get probably close to about... 60 70 hours each week and i'm an rca so what i use what my office has me do is my relief 
my work every single Monday. I do that route for my relief carrier every single Monday, but then Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I'm either going in to do pack, help out with packages for other carriers, help out with their, um, their DPS, um, just so I can learn their route. So what I mean by that is, say I am assigned as relief for Route 11, but I can come in on my non-relief day and help out R12 by doing his DPS for his route. So what I'll do is I'll take out his DPS, just do the DPS for his whole route, and he does the packages. That way I'm getting paid, I'm also learning his route, but then he's also getting paid because he's doing the packages and I'm doing the mail. Um, it all depends on what you know you your supervisor asks you or what you you want to do. I have I'm in a pretty big office, so there's always something for for me to do. I mean, even when they don't have you coming in, they give you a day off. You can request to come in voluntarily. Just make sure it's not in breach of your contract. They can't they can't work you more than 13 days without giving you a break. Um, but some some offices don't care. Just do whatever you're told by your supervisors, and um, you can grief it later. Um, well, I also want to touch base on, I think someone mentioned in a comment in my previous video that they were an RCA and they switched over to a CCA because the city carriers, they get more hours. That is definitely the case, but also depending on the office, the city carriers definitely get a lot of hours, and they're paid hourly. They're not paid evaluation like... Um, rule carriers are because under an evaluation for rule carriers you can finish your whole route within the week in under you know 40 hours but it's evaluated for 45 so you'll get paid the remaining five hours regardless if you work or not um, so that's a little bit of the benefit but sometimes it could take you longer sometimes you could get somewhat screwed um, I've always done the math in my head and I don't understand how a rule carrier can possibly get screwed because any hours after 40 you're automatically given overtime it's, it's going to be hourly after that but then some of the routes are different because they're evaluated for over 40 hours so you don't hit overtime until you hit after a certain mark after 40 hours and what i mean by that is that like i mentioned before my route is evaluated for 45 hours which means i have 45 hours within the week um to do my route that's that's just how it is. But if I take longer than that, um, it'll be overtime, but it'll be have to be over 45 hours that I've actually committed to the route um, from what my understanding is. But city carriers, definitely you get paid hourly. You, you come in whenever you finish, you finish with the same thing for rural carriers, except they walk more, we drive more. Um, so I hope that answers, I mean, any question anybody may have but as, as a rule carrier you're under an evaluation whereas a city carrier you are under an hourly pay see you guys in the next video